Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing professional here? Welcome back to my playthrough of Apollo Justice, the Ace Attorney Trilogy. Let's continue where we left off, so now we're gonna be going to the trial, so this should be interesting. And if you enjoy this series, do drop a like on it. It does help it out a lot. Okay, here the trial's gonna be good. April 18, 9.15 a.m. District Court, Defendant, Lobby, Number 3. You okay, Athena? You've been really antsy ever since we got here. I I'm just excited. This is my first real court case, after all. Yeah, a real ball of excitement she is. I know- oh, uh, just what she needs. Athena! Eek! Didn't you ever learn about indoor and outdoor voices? I'm just trying to show you the best way to relieve your pretrial jitters. By scaring the daylights out of me. No, I find that shouting, uh, I'm fine, in a loud voice really a relieve stress. It's part of my Chords of Steel voice, a uh, workout, and a must before every trial. Y you want me to shout, here. That's right, here. I'll go first, then you try. I'm Apollo Justice and I'm fine. Alright, um... I'm Athena Sykes. And I'm fine. Hmm. I think that actually worked. I thought it might help. Always works for me. An old friend of mine from junior high and I say it all the time. I see. A proven remedy to calm the soul. I like it. Hey, how about we finish off with... A race around the courthouse. The point is to relieve stress, not get totally exhausted. What's of all the racket, you two? I'm um, Mr. Wright. Heh <laughs> uh, just a little voice workout. Hey, what's with the suit? Oh, this? I was thinking about getting my attorney's badge back, that's all. That's all? That's huge news. But why now? I have a feeling I'll be needed in the courtroom again sometime soon. But we can talk about that another time. No fair. Inquiring minds want to know. But wow. I'm so used to him in his usual laid-back clothes. That suit makes him look like a million dollars. By the way, have you heard about the prosecutor assigned to this case? Yeah. He's serving time, but before that, he was a prosecutor. He also uses psychology. That's right. I've heard the rumors about how he, uh, he was b back before his conviction. Using the power of suggestion, he could make even the most stalwart of uh, defendants confess. Psychology in the courtroom. Been hearing a lot about that lately. So, he must be a pretty scary guy, considering he's a prison inmate and all. So they say. They also say he'll cut you down if you talk too much. Ah. I knew he was going to be bad news. Haha, <laughs> it's probably just hyperbole. At least I hope for your sake. Wait, so is it true or not? Let's just say you should be concise and choose your words carefully. If you'd like to keep that um, head of yours attached to the rest of your body, that is. Yikes. Better tone down my cords of steel, too. So are you all ready? It might be a good idea to check the court record again before stepping into the ring. Yokai Legend Scroll, and a 2 Warning Charm, Nine Tails Flower Special Edition Paper, Crime Scene Diagram, Foyer Diagram, Fox and Demon Statue, Crime Photo, Amazing Nine Tails Mask, Amazing Nine Tails Glossy, Jinxie Statement, TV Listening. So this case tells me, this case is probably going to be very difficult because there are so many pieces of evidence. Um, so it's me having to pick out the right piece. But here's the thing is, the prosecutor in this case is a convicted murderer, which how would a convicted murderer even be a prosecutor that doesn't really make much sense, but I guess it's the, the world of Ace Attorney. Um, right, Mr. Wright, but, but I'm fine. I'll be watching from the gallery. Good luck. Thanks. Okay, let's do this. The odds of pulling this off are ridiculously low, but that's not nothing new. Believe in our client. Seek the truth. That's all we can do. Hang in there, Mayor Tenma. Here comes justice. Okay. April 18th. 9.30 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number four. Day one. Court is now in session. Okay, here we go. All rise. Court is now in session for the trial of Damien Tenma. Apollo Justice Defense Team Leader is ready, Your Honor. I'd know that big booming voice anywhere. As chipper as ever, eh, Mr. Justice? But who is the young lady next to you? 
I'm Athena Sykes, Mr. Justice's a junior partner fresh out of law school. Well now, full of beans too, eh? Excellent. Makes an old man feel young again. Now for the prosecution. Oh, where is he? Huh? It appears the prosecution is not ready yet. Never fear, for I, I, I shall explain. It's just a minor procedural a complication, Your Honor. The prosecution for this case is being escorted from prison as we speak. Prison? Oh yes, of course. I almost forgot that he is currently serving time. What kind of prosecutor be in the middle of prison to? Oh, this is the prosecutor? Yep, Prosecutor Blackquill's an inmate. So this guy's a convicted murderer, and he's a prosecutor now. But even a convicted murderer still got a job to do and duties to perform. No. Um. Okay. Um. Uh. Um, who's that with his back to us over there? That's him, I'm sure of it. Prosecutor Blackquill. Um, is the prosecution ready? Hmm. Enough jabbering. Get on with it already. Ah, uh, of course, forgive me. Uh, why are all the people related to this case so scary? Oh, very well, Prosecutor Blackwell. You're opening a statement, if you will. Ah, w what's the matter? Must we continue to further away time like this? Is all right there in the indictment? An opening statement would be pointless. Pointless? Oh, um, well... Looks like the cat, or in this case, the prosecutor the judge's tongue. But, but, we need an opening statement as an overview of the case at hand. Hmm. Well, then your baldness, if it's so very important, why don't you do the honors? Okay, yeah, you don't do something like this in court, never and ever. You never insult the judge. You can never do that. Easiest, it's the easiest way to be put in contempt of court is insulting the judge. Who? Me? There's a term for people who whine and fuss about how they need silly, useless things. And then decide they no longer want them once it's theirs. A selfish old fool. Huh? Well, that's twice he insulted the judge. Wait, was the prosecutor's opening statement? Hmm. Old dotards such as you are a plague upon the young. Pity your poor grandchildren. Or is it, um, a great-grandchildren? Wow. He just insulted the judge three times. Hold them in contempt of the court! All these years I thought the opening statement was the prosecutor's job. But I suppose I could give it a try. Might be a nice change of pace. Well, you know, you should just hold him in contempt of court at this point. He insulted you three times in a row. What a weak judge. What? He actually fell for that? It must have been the power suggestion Mr. Wright was talking about. Ahem. The opening statement, huh? Hmm. Let's see here. The victim was one Rex Kiyubi, alderman of Nine Tails Vale. And the defendant, Damien Tenma, mayor of Tenma Town, is accused of his murder. And why, pray tell, was the mayor arrested? His prints were on the murder weapon. Plus, he had a motive, the elimination of the biggest roadblock to municipal merger. The caretaker and the secretary and other potential suspects have both alibis. And his daughter, who was also in the vicinity at the time of the incident, has no motive. So in a nutshell, I have to say the charges against the defendant are in incontrovertible. Bravo, your baldness. Your years of experience shine bright like your head. Oh, flattery will get you everywhere. He's playing Simon Says with the judge. Moving right along now, let's hear from our first witness for today, Detective Fulbright. I'm trying to do, like, the accents of these characters, how I think they would sound. Uh, witness, please state your name and occupation. I am the detective assigned to this case. Bobby Fulbright! Oh, and I'll also be keeping tabs on the Black Quill here. I also heard you would provide protection if it ever came to that. I love the, de I love the detective's theme, by the way. Huh. It would seem that I have been sorely underestimated. 
Wait, who's protecting who from what? Still, I truly believe anyone can turn their life around, even old Black will here. Fool bright. Save your platitudes for funerals. Get on with your statement. Ha 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 That's the spirit. Justice must be a swift and true. I see it in your eyes. There is hope for your rehabilitation and return to society. I will never give up on you. Prosecutor Blackwell doesn't seem to intimidate Detective Fulbright. Well, you know what they say, ignorance is bliss. Oh, so that's why Detective Fulbright was assigned to Blackwell. He's so oblivious. Now, let's have your first statement. Detective Fulbright. You got it. But first, I'd like to say to the defense that justice will ultimately prevail. About the murder. Alderman Kiyubi was murdered with a spear that had been on the wall. The fingerprints of the defendant, Damien Tenma, were found on the murder weapon. At the time, Alderman Kiyubi was asleep from a drug he unwittingly ingested. Mayor Tenma attacked his helpless victim, impaling him like a human shish kebab. But the sudden pain jolted the victim awake, and he grabbed the statue and struck back. Well, he just confirmed that the, vic that the accused, the defendant, was asleep. Alderman Kiyubi had been slipped some kind of sleep-induced drug. That's right. The accused was scared because the alderman was a former pro wrestler. So he slipped him a drug to make sure he'd be out cold and defenseless, but... Here's the autopsy report to prove it. Yubi's autopsy report. Cause of death, stab of a spear. Estimated time of death around 3.20pm. The victim had been in a drug-induced slumber, but the defendant was also under it, wasn't he? And the victim managed to attack his attacker despite being impaled by a spear? That sounds almost superhuman. Is it even possible? Well, he was a former pro wrestler, after all. That spear was probably nothing more than a mosquito bite to him. Not so fast. Don't try to brush it all off by saying the alderman had been a pro wrestler. Do you really expect us to believe he could fight back after being uh, skewered by a spear? Hmm. Never heard of the incredible feats of which man is capable in a pinch, have you? Like the samurai of yore, wrestlers can battle through intense pain. It sharpens their senses. I used to talk about it with a former wrestler I met in the clink. I don't know. It still sounds a little far-fetched. Clink, by the way, is a slang term for jail. Uh, in prison. Does it now? Then perhaps we should test this theory on you with the edge of my blade. Uh, I didn't sign up for this. Hmm. <laughs> and so your life is spared. For now. Uh, please let those shackles be made of titanium. I don't want to die. Ah, my investigations are as thorough as, as they are foolproof. Or my name isn't Fulbright. I vow to resign immediately if I ever make a false arrest. Well, you're about to. The accused, uh, the, the accused prince were on the weapon, and he's the one person who found an alibi. Quite the size of evidence, wouldn't you agree? Your baldness. Hmm. The defendant is sounding guiltier by the minute. He has the judge leaning towards a guilty verdict, and the trial's just barely begun. <laughs> What's more, a curious rumor about the accused is making the rounds. They say he seeks the merger for the purpose of freeing Ten Matero from his imprisonment. Truth be told, I can think of no real reason to show interest in that backwards burg. Perhaps he's a complete nutter and really does seek to release an imaginary demon. Either way, he is ra raving mad and more than capable of murdering the alderman. That mayor is a strange one, I heard he went to a blood drive, but instead of donating, he tried to make a withdrawal. Order! Or there will be no gossiping in my court. Your baldness. Please take a, a gander at those charms plastered across his cranium. I hear they're meant to keep him safe from possession by the demon Ten Matero. Then again... Perhaps he's already under the demon's spell. Behold! The lunatic appears poised to lunge at you at any moment. Hey. Hold it. The rumors and quirks of, of Mayor Tenma have no relevance to this case. Besides, those charms on his head, they're, they're just a fashion statement. I think. You don't say I think. Uh, huh. Come to think of it, such things don't seem relevant to the case, do they? The prosecution will refrain from dragging our client's reputation through the mud. Oh, 
What a dreadfully fearsome lass we have here. Ooh, thanks for that lifeline, Athena. Careful, Apollo, he has the judges dancing in the palm of his hand. The power of suggestion is one of the more powerful tools in Simon Blackwell's arsenal. He's trying to manipulate everyone's impressions to suit his objectives. So yeah, so this, this prosecutor is very different than Kristoff, where he is, um, uh, he's basically using psychology, like they said, against you. This guy really is bad news. So, um, oh, here's what I want to comment on this, is, uh, you don't ever comment on somebody's physical appearance in court. Um, uh, you never really do that. Uh, you don't say, you know, what the person is wearing, stuff like that. Uh, there is, there is really only two times that I think you can comment on a person's physical appearance in court, and the only two times you really c could technically talk about somebody's physical appearance is if the person has some kind of injury. And in this case, it actually might be relevant because remember, he got hit on the top of the head. That's where all those like charms were up there. So if you actually take that off, you can see that he's been injured up there too. Uh, so we might actually be able to use that to his, um, uh, to his defense later on. And the second reason is the only other time that you comment on a defendant's appearance is if it's relevant to the... Um, how do I say if it's relevant to the to the murder uh, specifically? For example, if the person if the person who was killed was killed with like a really like um a uh, strong weapon, like you know something really heavy that they had to hold, and the defendant is really you know small and skinny, you might you know a good lawyer might be able to say like you know my client is like you know small skinny, they wouldn't be able to handle something you know that big. That's uh, relevant, but you know, and injuries are relevant too because you could you could say, oh, you know, they were injured in this, um, or you could use that actually to attack the defendant, also saying that um, uh, that this is proof that they were involved in it. Uh, so that's like um, it, you know, those are things that you can comment on, but like commenting on what the person is wearing, you know, stuff like that. No, you you know, you can't really you can't do that in court. Uh, in any case, it seems the victim did manage to defend himself despite being impaled. What sort of weapon did he use against his attackers? None other than this statue right here. It appears to be a statue of two strange creatures locked in battle. Two yokai to be exact. Uh, on one side is the nine-tailed fox and on the other Tenma Taro. Quite interesting if you think about it. It's as though this very case were rendered in art. A statue, uh, the weapon used to bludgeon the mare. The mare's, um, uh, blood was found on it, but no prince could be lifted. Hmm. So that's what he was hit on the head with. Mr. Justice, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Alderman Kiyubi was murdered with a spear that had been on the wall. Hold it! So, those weapons on the wall of the fox chamber, I presume those are real. Don't you think keeping real weapons around like that is rather dangerous? Well, it can be, but a lot of people actually do this in real life. Um, and, you know, specifically keep them as decorations. No matter what he collected, the alderman insisted it'd be the real deal. For instance, he had a real demon's club in his possession. Apparently, one of his ancestors claimed it after defeating a demon in battle. What? That's gotta be an old wives' tale. <laughs> the alderman had pure, unadulterated justice flowing in his veins. Whatever he did, he did it right. We've lost a real champion of justice in his death. Hmm. Nothing but a claptrap and balder dash, if you ask me. Now stop your uh, bleeding and tell us about the weapon. Your wish is my command. The fingerprints of the defendant, Damien Tenma, were found on the murder weapon. Hold it! doesn't make sense if you think about it. Prince could be easily wiped off. Mm. You do have a point. You do have a point there. I'd venture uh, to say he did not wipe off the prince because he could not. What do you mean? Looks like he wants you to figure it out. Well, don't just stand there. Show him who's boss. I'm totally lost. So why don't you just tell me the answer already? I don't think he saw that a plea for help. You feeling alright, kid? Running a fever, perhaps? I wish trials came with a re reset button. Well, the specifics, uh, may well, the specifics may yet come to light. Please proceed, Detective Fulbright. At the time, Alderman Kiyubi was asleep from a drug he unwittingly ingested. Hold it! 
Come to think of it, coffee cup was found on the floor. Was a sedative in his coffee? Bingo! We found traces of sleeping agent all over the inside of the cup. And that is why he was he was out cold. That is until he left to his feet upon being impaled by the mayor. What an awful way to wake up. Heh, <laughs> a rather stimulating eye-opener if you ask me. I too would have risen to the attack, for the dying battle is the samurai way. Paradise awaits fallen heroes, but that hole in his stomach would make eating a challenge. Prosecutor Blackwell, please, those morbid jokes of yours have no place in this court. Hmm. <laughs> Says the jester in the detective's guys. Moving right along. Mayor Tenma attacked his helpless victim, impaling him like a human shish kebab. Hold it! So the alderman was drugged because he was really strong. Did you see those uh, rock hearted muscles of his? I'm surprised the spear even managed to pierce that armor like a mus muscle uh, culture. I admit, I'm completely jealous of that righteous body of his. Ha 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 Well, he did look pretty buff even in that suit he had on. Quite a difference when compared with a yellow belly like you. Yellow belly? Who's even says that anymore? Yeah, and the color's all wrong, too. Oh, I know. How about a squishy red tomato? I have to st uh, strike both of your comments from the record. Mr. Justice's character is not the issue here. Now, let's get back to what happened after the far uh, more muscular alderman was impaled. So, yeah, so, um, here's the thing. is If prosecutor insults the lawyer, that could also be held in contempt of court. You can't insult people in the middle of trial. If it's prosecutor insulting judge, the lawyer insulting judge, lawyer insulting prosecutor, prosecutor insulting, you know, lawyer, you can't do something like that. So, you know, the judge could have held this guy in contempt of court, like, you know, five times at this point. Three times for insulting him, once for insulting Apollo, and also several times for diverting away from the topic at hand. Yes, well, your average person would likely have died in the spot. But the sudden pain jolted the victim awake, and he grabbed the statue and struck back. Could he really have attacked his attacker after being impaled with that huge spear? Absolutely. After all, he was once a pro wrestler. The justice of being drugged, then uh, spare, uh, speared, was an answer with a righteous counterattack. Does being a former pro wrestler make him superhuman? So yes. Yeah, so here's the thing: is Apollo is 100% right on this. Is if it does, it, and this is one thing that's important. Is this is what people a lot of times think? People think that if somebody's like a giant, for example, that they can take like a you know a massive hit. Like if somebody's like a giant, they can take being shot, for example. But being like giant and really strong, it doesn't matter how strong you are is that a bullet is gonna go right through and hit all your internal organs. And it's like the same with a spear. It's like a spear is an extremely sharpened op polearm object. So if you get impaled with a spear, spear is gonna be going right through you. It's gonna hit all your internal organs. It's gonna be right so the fact that anybody in that state could lunge at somebody, it's, it's practically impossible. If you get stabbed with, right in the chest with a spear and you manage to lunge at somebody, no, it doesn't matter how big you are. That spear pierces right through you, it's gonna stop you, it's gonna take you down. Absolutely. After all, he was one of the good guys, like a superhero on the side of justice. Even though he was retired, he could still don his superhero guys in times of need. Objection! You need to lay off the comic books, detective. We're talking about real life here. Setting aside the half-wits flights of fancy, the fact is this. The court ordered, post-mortem concluded, the victim moved after his skewering. That's not evidence. That's not- so, if somebody gets impaled with a spear, they might still be alive for like, you know, a few minutes perhaps. That's why they're still gonna be moving around, but they're definitely not gonna have enough energy to lunge at somebody, no. So he found the strength to somehow attack his attacker, huh? Detective Fulbright's testimony sounds airtight. No wonder he's so confident. No, he only thinks it's airtight. It's up to us to poke some holes in it. That part about the alderman fighting back sounds like a big hole wanting to be poked. It is. That's the key, dear. The 
sudden pain jolted the victim awake and he grabbed the statue and struck back. And it makes no sense why he the why the mayor would just sit down after that too and stay there. He would want to get out of there as quick as possible if he was the killer. So yeah, look at look at where he's impaled. Like right there. That he would manage to just run across the room and just with that in him and attack his attack. No, that would stop anybody. And that's right in the middle of the chest too. No, that that's a kill hit. Here, yeah. no, that's um Yes, this is this is the part that's wrong. the autopsy report. Wait a second. There was no prints found on this. He's not wearing gloves. There's no there's I hope this is the this is the thing. There's there's no objection. Am I right? I I think I'm right because the music stops when you're right. Did the alderman really strike the mayor? What? Are you questioning my sense of justice? Your so-called justice needs to find itself a pair of legs to stand on. Exactly. You claim the alderman struck back after the mayor put a, a spear through him. The statue uh, he supposedly used to defend himself creates a major hole in your theory. It would appear that the defense has a counter-argument. Very well. Let's hear what the defense thinks is odd about the detective statue theory. There are no fingerprints. I was right! I got it! I was right. There are no fingerprints on this supposedly crucial piece of evidence. And if you look at the crime scene photo... You'll notice that the alderman isn't wearing gloves. Yes, I believe- I believe he is quite, uh, gloveless indeed. If he touched the statue with his bare hands, he should have left some fingerprints. Detective Fulbright, you did take that into account during your investigation, didn't you? Ah, uh, oh, this can't be happening. Did, did, did I arrest the wrong man? You did it, Apollo. You knocked Detective Fulbright off his horse. Well, just one point in our favor. Who do you suppose um, clubbed the mayor if it wasn't the Alderman, the real killer? Hmm. Well, if it wasn't the Alderman, that means someone else must have uh, clubbed the mayor. You mean there was a third party there in the Fox Chamber? Exactly. And this could be the big break we've been looking for. Huh. There does seem to be a hole in the prosecution's argument. Prosecutor Blackwell, would you care to respond to the defense's assertion? Hmm. The least you could do is look at me while being dismissive. Your mind is as, as dull as, as an un, unhoned blade, Justice Dono. Justice Dono? He's been watching too many samurai flicks. It will take far more than that to cut down Simon Blackwell. A whelp such as uh, you has no hope against my superior swordsmanship. This is a trial, not a sword fight, Prosecutor Blackwell. <laughs> there is a perfectly good explanation for the lack of prints in the statue. Oh, this will be good. I want to hear this. You might recall that bloodstained cloth found the scene of the crime. Oh no, this. I know what he's going to be going for. Well, it just so happens that the blood was the mayor's. So, um, what are you getting at? He wiped his prints. Hone your mind, boy. Why was there blood on that cloth? Solve that riddle, and you shall see that the hole you fought you found is but an illusion. Now, let's see. How was that cloth used? Was it used...
The cloth is right there. But why was it left under the couch? That's the weird thing. It's not to wipe this, uh, to wrap the statue. I think he wants us to say it was wipe uh, to wipe up blood as a head covering. I would say it was be maybe a head covering. But it's to wipe up blood, um... Maybe to wipe up blood. Maybe the cloth was used to wipe as much of the mayor's blood as possible off the statue. And the process the culprit inadvertently erased the alderman's fingerprints Objection. as well. But the mayor did not. But the mayor did not bother uh, to wipe away his own fingerprints on the murder weapon. Why would he wipe down one weapon but not the other? Careful now. Use what little brains you have left before you speak. Uh, give me a do-over of that one, please. Now let's see. It was as a head covering then. The alderman was probably wearing it over his head. What? Do you truly think the Alderman would show up to a meeting over the fate of his village? Wearing that ridiculous looking cloth over his head? Sure, they had a festival that day, didn't they? Who's to say they didn't uh, party a little too hard and just forgot to take it off? Oh. That was bad. Okay, fine, so maybe he didn't do that. Can I try one more time? Was it to wrap up the statue? I'm thinking now. That... that actually is a good point. The the cloth might have been over the statue, yeah. Maybe the alderman wrapped the statue in the cloth. In short, he wasn't touching the statue directly when he used it to strike back at the mayor. Ah. Precisely. Bully for you, my boy. Uh, it was nothing. Apollo, don't let him start manipulating you, too. You just closed the hole for the prosecution. I did. Ah, I did. Right. That statue wrapped in cloth would leave no fingerprints at, at, uh, is as plain as day. But this also proves there are no holes in our theory of the alderman striking back. Well... But if it was used to, to strike the mayor, there's one contradiction here. Why is the cloth underneath the sofa? Look to the left left side of the picture, guys, where the alderman is impaled. Why is the cloth underneath the sofa? That doesn't make any sense. It would just fall under there. That doesn't that doesn't make sense. Oops, ah. Uh. Wrapped in a large cloth. Now that you see how dull your mind is, I'll make sure to sharpen it next time. Particularly frightened inmate once told me that. He always ten tenderly honed his blades before he went to work, like the samurai of yore. Samurai sounds more like a homicidal maniac to me. Actually, he, he was working in the prison kitchen at the time. Wait, so the inmate was a murdering samurai prison chef? Hmm. It would seem that the victim and his killer were the only ones there after all. I was kind of attached to that hole. Now what? Apollo, I just thought of something. If they didn't find anyone's fingerprints on the statue... Who's to say someone other than the alderman didn't hit the mayor with it? Why didn't I think of that? Anyone could, uh, could have not left their prints on it. Hmm. Then who, pray tell, struck the mayor with a statue? Please illuminate us with your wisdom, young lady. There's only one answer. The real killer. Prove the existence of this real killer, then. What evidence have you? Oh, I'll give you evidence, all right. Fina, are you sure about this? To borrow your words, Apollo, I'm fine. Take a look at this. Black fe feathers and tracks allegedly from a yokai were found at the scene. I believe they're from the third party who struck the mirror with that statue. Is the defense actually suggesting some sort of monster killed the alderman? That's exactly what I'm suggesting. 
No. No, no, no. No, Fino, you just lost what little credibility we had left. Yup. Ah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Guess I got carried away. Mr. Justice, we've no time to deal with objections between members of the defense. Sorry, Your Honor. It's just this kid still, well, a kid. Ouch. You meanie, I'm reporting this to Mr. Wright. So, is this court to believe that feathers and tracks are from a yokai, as you put it? Um, no, Your Honor. I believe they are fabrication. The real killer wants us to believe some sort of monster murdered the alderman. Hmm, interesting. And why do you suppose the killer would do that? Um, why indeed? Mr. Justice, you seem as new to this as your partner is. Ouch. This I'm not reporting to Mr. Wright. Hey, fool, Bright, explain to his baldness what these brats are missing. You know, the who and why behind those feathers and tracks. What? You mean you can explain all that? Ha 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 Our investigation, investigative process without equal. I'm starting to think I chose the wrong profession. Very well. Let's hear about these so-called yokai feathers and tracks. Let me know in the comments if you guys like the, um, the accents I'm trying to do for these characters. The entire case centers on one man's attempt to cross opposition to the municipal merger. Mayor Tenma panicked when the Amazing Ninetales helped embolden the pro protesters. So he stoked the village's, uh, villagers' fear by fabricating a monster. The strange feathers and tracks he planted made it look like a yokai was the killer. Those feathers and tracks stoked the villagers' fears. Absolutely, he knew exactly how to prey on their superstitious minds. Those feathers only give weight to the idea that the alderman was slain by a demon. The accursed uh, demon, Tenma Taro, that is. Tenma, uh, Tenma who? Ten Tenma Taro, the legendary demon locked away in the village's forbidden chamber. From a young age, the villagers are taught to fear the great black feather demon. And thus, were they blinded to other more than plausible explanations? <laughs> Hold on for a second, before we start letting our imaginations run wild. Isn't there someone else that could be considered a suspect? Mr. Justice, please explain yourself. On the day of the incident, there was a special event held in, at QB Manor. And as part of this event, there was someone dressed in the likeness of Ten Matero. Obviously, this person is much more likely suspect than any legendary Objection. demon. Dollard, you are playing right into the killer's mind games. What? Listen here. The feathers and tracks were merely red herrings. The villagers believed the murder to be the work of the real Ten Matero. However, the police believe that the person in the Ten Matero suit is the killer. Ah. The defendant sought to sow this confusion in order to deflect blame away from himself. However, he was knocked unconscious by the alderman. And thus, our mentally deficient mayor was caught red-handed at the scene of the crime. Objection. Do you honestly believe Mayor Tenma would do something so Objection. stupid? The evidence speaks for itself, fool, bright. Right. It was the mayor's last-ditch effort to stop the opposition before things got crazy. The amazing Ninetales was, uh, was fueling both the yokai, uh, craze and the anti-merger movement. Plus, he's one of the better-known masked wrestlers and the hometown favorite. That's why the mayor panicked and set uh, out on the path of injustice. But do the people of Ninetales Vale really believe a yokai is behind a crime? Yokai sightings are an everyday event there, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Hmm. I must say, a crime that preys upon innocent impressionable minds. Just so, a particularly silver-tongued inmate once had the following words for me. The innocent of heart are the easiest prey. You don't you don't say, was this an inmate? A, a con artist? No. He was framed for the murder of his beloved. I actually felt sorry for the poor chap. Wait, so he wasn't the predator, but rather the prey? Yes, well. Now then, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Feathers and tracks. This entire case centers on one man's attempt to cross opposition to the municipal merger. The 
Detective Fulbright, is the anti-merger movement really that strong? Oh, absolutely. They parade around in yokai costumes shouting down with Mayor Tenma. And just the other day, they stormed Tenma City Hall, claiming it was a den of vipers. Hmm. But when the accused showed his face, the angry mob scattered like leaves upon an autumn wind. For you see, lowly yokai are no match for Tenma Taro, the dark lord of their kind. Wait, are the villagers scared of Mayor Tenma or Tenma Taro? I'm confused. I think he means Mayor Tenma. It's easy to get a wrong impression about the guy. Detective Fulbright, why do you suppose a defendant would commit such an act? Mayor Tenma panicked when the amazing Ninetales helped embolden the pro protesters. Hold it! Amazing Ninetales. No one knows his true identity, right? That's right. And he was a lone wolf, or in other words, he didn't belong to a wrestling federation. He appeared like a shooting star, defeating one Tenma Town wrestler after another. And before anyone knew it, he was a champion. Like the samurai of yore surrounded thick with enemies, he cut them down one by one. It was a complete and utter loss of face for Tenma a Town Pro Wrestling. He was amazing! If ever there was a real superhero, it would be him. I dream of becoming a true champion of justice like him someday. I bet Detective Fulbright would be a great pro wrestler. He could have even teamed up with Prosecutor Blackwell. A police detective and a prisoner in change. You know, I think people would actually pay to see that. I know I would. Ah, oh, so you do understand the greatness that is the amazing Ninetales. So he stoked the villagers' fears by fabricating a monster. Did the murder, murder and yokai evidence really stroke the villagers' fear? Absolutely, it had an immediate effect. The presumed return of the dreaded Tenmatero has them shaking in their boots. Oh my, is it really that bad? Heh, <laughs> that superstitious lot, it's as if Jack the Ripper had been set loose in their village. So Jack the Ripper was a real-life serial killer, it was never... It was probably the most great, the greatest unsolved mystery in history. Uh, he was a serial killer that terrorized um, Victoria and London, specifically the Whitechapel district. He murdered uh, prostitutes. Uh, they actually believe that Jack the Ripper was actually a Polish guy that was actually put in an insane asylum afterwards. And he, um, uh, and uh, when he was put in the insane asylum, the killings actually stopped. So uh, that's probably what he's referring that the murder was very brutal. The mur mere thought of that demon lurking about is enough to spark a mass exodus. I see. That's a very persuasive argument. The mere thought of his honor buying into Simon the Psycho Slasher's words makes me want to spark my own exodus out of the courtroom right about now. So you see, there can only be one reason why anyone would plant those feathers and tracks. The strange feathers and tracks, he planted make it look like a yokai was the killer. Oh, but it doesn't add up. If what you say is true, why top it off with a murder? Hmm. What do you mean? You claim that our client plant you claim that our client planted the yokai evidence to stoke the villagers' fear. If so, then why not stop there? Why murder Alderman Kyubi? Hmm. Excellent point. It is, isn't it? So your honor agrees there was no reason for the murder, correct? Perhaps the killing was on the spur at the moment. You're saying it wasn't premeditated? From the outset, I had no intention of paying heed to any of your babble. However, the fact is, the mayor made a startling discovery. Startling discovery? Why don't I like the sound of that? Alderman Kyubi, a s secret identity. Apollo. I think Prosecutor Blackwell has figured out the Alderman's secret identity. So, basically what he's doing right now is he's proving the case for murder. Because I'm not murder manslaughter. So, what the prosecutor has done at this point is he's actually drop the charges down from murder to manslaughter because if this is the case which it probably isn't the guy's innocent but if this is the case that it was a spur of the moment killing it wasn't premeditated because the definition of a murder is a planned killing that's what a murder is it's when you plan to kill somebody and you, you go ahead and do it a spur of the moment killing that's more manslaughter and there's um there's voluntary manslaughter and involuntary manslaughter slaughter Uh, but even if he has, why would it be a motive for the mayor to commit murder? This is not good. A patch of fur was discovered at the crime scene. 
It's from the mask worn by the Amazing Ninetales. Therefore, we can conclude that this mask was at the crime scene. Oh my, but why would it have been there? The victim, uh, the victim was a former pro wrestler and a member of the anti-merger movement. Need I say more? Well, um... Ah! C could it really be? Hmm. Your baldness has had an epiphany, I see. Our victim, Rex Kyuubi, was the Amazing Ninetales. And the mayor's discovery of this fact was his motive for murder. No! Order, order, order! What a shocking development. A motive clearer than crystal clear. What do we do now, Apollo? I didn't think they'd tie the Alderman's secret identity to the mayor's motive for murder. At last, we've reached my real point. Why did the Alderman have to forge a secret identity? Does it not pique your interest, your baldness? I admit, it I admit it does. It is odd that he had to uh, create this other persona. Just to secretly participate in the anti-merger movement. Very astute of you, your baldness. Right, now take a look at this. Blackmail letter. If, if you value your dearest life, you will merge Ninetales Veil with Tenma Town. Do not tell anyone about this fret. If you do, consider your dearest as good as dead. That's the blackmail letter that the mayor had gotten. That was... No, that, that's... That the mayor was being blackmailed. If you value your dearest life, you will merge Ninetales Vale with Tenma Town. This blackmail letter was found in the Alderman Kyuubi's pocket. W what At present, the Alderman's wife is in the hospital. And that letter is clear evidence the mayor was blackmailing him by threatening her life. Wait, uh... But didn't the blackmail letter sent to Te Mayor Tenma go missing? Right after the Alderman's murder. I think maybe the killer took the letter from the mayor after the murder. And planted it into the Alderman's pocket. It's possible. But we don't have any proof that that's what happened. Talk about being up the creek about a paddle. Threatening letter discovered in one of Alderman Kiwi's pockets. Mayor Tenma would have made a clean getaway if he just left after uh, planting the yokai things. But he was knocked out cold by such a decision to kill the Amazing Ninetales. So it was the Amazing Ninetales counterattack that brought the entire crime to light. Wait a sec. Fulbright's claim that the mayor killed the alderman after planting the yokai evidence. And that mayor was knocked out cold immediately after that. Detective Fulbright, please add your previous statement to your testimony. Mayor Tenma, uh, killed the sleeping alderman after planting the feathers and tracks. Hold it! So let me get this straight. You believe the mayor planted the yokai evidence before the murder, not after? Absolutely. And then he was knocked out cold by the alderman's last punch. He wouldn't have had a chance to plant the evidence after that. Hm. Something's not right here. Hard to believe that a stiff, humorless man like the mayor could be uh, behind such a stunt. Ah, we have to do something, Apollo. Believe they, they they pin it all on the mayor, and we're going to need to prove that the mayor Tenma didn't plant that yokai stuff. How are we supposed to do that? Okay. Knocked out cold by a sudden decision to kill the amazing. I mean, the mayor killed the alderman after planting.
I mean, they might make the argument that he knocked him out with, with the drug and then planted it, but... Wait, the mask. Objection. Damn, it's not that. Ugh. I'm gonna get I already lost two bars. Okay. Sold. This is a new feature. Uh, hmm. There has to be a contradiction here somewhere. Too bad I'm drawing a blank. There was a statement that I thought was a little strange, but... I wouldn't bet my life on it. And which statement would that be? Since I'm, I'm, I'm the one betting my life on it. <laughs> okay. You must know. I'll show you the one I'm thinking of. Trying to swallow my pride and let her lend a hand. Must be an inconsistency in the testimony if he is pointing out. That's like a new feature, console. Okay, so... Mayor Tenma killed the sleeping alderman after planting the feathers and the tracks. Wait a second, wait, let me look at the picture. He killed the sleeping alderman after planting the feathers, um... But there's blood on them. Objection! There's blood on their footprints. The 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 monsters. Detective Fulbright, your sense of justice is anything but fair. What's this? You dare question my justice again? Yes, and I'm going to prove it to you. Take a look at this photo. This is a crime scene photo, and just what does this prove? It proves when the feathers and tracks were planted. But I already told you they were planted before the murder, but there's blood on them. The defendant planted the yokai evidence, then was knocked out while killing his victim. But that would be impossible. If you look right here, it's clear when the feathers and tracks were left at the scene. It's gotta be the blood. Aren't you just post, post, po pointing? Aren't you just pointing to the yokai feathers and tracks, Mr. Justice? Yes. See how the feathers are on top of the blood, and the tracks were made in blood. In other words, uh, the yokai evidence couldn't have only resulted after the murder. The the mayor's, uh must have planted the evidence after killing the alderman. But you said it yourself. The mayor had been knocked unconscious thereafter. There would have been no time for him to plant any evidence at all. Therefore. There must have been someone else besides the mayor and the alderman at the crime scene. Got it. Ah, There must be some mistake. Order, order! Oh, wh where's your evidence? You can't possibly have any, can you? <laughs> evidence? Oh, I have evidence. In fact, I have an eyewitness testimony for you. You do, but how? Was my vaunted sense of justice really just half-baked? He's taking this really hard. Hmm. Mr. Justice, what is his testimony regarding a third party that you claim to have? 
I have it right here, Your Honor. It's the sworn testimony of Mr. Tenma's daughter. The witness Jinxie Tenma saw Yokai in the hallway after stumbling upon the scene. So, I know what Black Will's gonna do now. Black Will's gonna say that the testimony's unreliable because it's his daughter. That's probably what he's gonna say. It was the demon Tenma Taro. He's the source of those feathers and tracks. Oops, somebody please say something. So, he was on the right track here, but he messed up by saying that it was a monster. The defense will explain to the court exactly what he means. You... You dare to mock this court and justice itself? You're unfit to bear your name, boy. Your baldness. It appears our defense attorney here is delirious from exhaustion. <laughs> Apollo, think of something quick before you're held in contempt of court. Well, he should have been held in contempt of court literally like six or five times at this point. What do you think I'm trying to do? Before you decide whether I should step down, please. Hear me out. Very well, Mr. Justice. I'm all ears. But you had better explain yourself well. What was this yokai you were talking about? It's all in this statement here. Uh, Jinxi Tenma asserts that she saw Tenma Taro. After she discovered the crime scene and called the police. She came around a corner in the hall. It was around here. That she saw Tenma Taro fleeing towards the foyer. The defense asserts that whoever was impersonating this monster is the one who left those feathers and tracks behind in intentionally or otherwise. Yep, that's it. Why? What? How incredibly unjust. Why haven't I heard about this before? The defense has proved there was someone else. So the mayor isn't the killer? Was it all a setup? The prosecutor is a convicted felon after all. Apollo, the momentum has shifted in our favor. Good. Now let's keep it that way. Hmm. Little do you realize that though you are in the midst of a fray, your sword is broken. My sword? I didn't know I had one to break. Are you implying there's a problem with my claim? Consider this. If that yokai impersonator had indeed fled towards the foyer, that fool and that fop would have seen him. They did. Fool and Fop. Oh, you mean Filch and LaBelle. Hmm. Now that you mention it. Both Phineas Filch and Florent LaBelle were in the foyer at the time, but they haven't stated that they saw Yokai, have they? Did you ever consider that Yokai uh, was but a figment of a scared little girl's imagination? Ah, why didn't those two uh, see the Ted Matero impersonator pass by? Why don't we ask them ourselves? I was just about to say that myself. No, really, I was. The defense would like to call Mr. Phineas a Filch, caretaker of Kyuubi Manor, to the stand. I just know he must have seen something. Hmm. I suppose we can't ignore the fact that the little girl believes she saw a monster. I trust you have no objections to Mr. Justice's request, Prosecutor Blackwell. I understand that Mr. Filch is enjoying a nap out in the lobby. A nap? Hmm. I knew that uh, Tanuki was a rare find. But when we captured him, I didn't think he'd end up a witness. Do with him you as you will. Did, did, did he just say captured? No way, I don't want to know. Very well then. Bailiff, please go wake Mr. Filch and escort him to the witness stand. Will the witness state his name and occupation, please? Name's Phineas Filch, caretaker of Kyuubi Manor. Oh, and... This is for you, your lordship. A little something I thought you might like. Oh, oh my, what a fabulous pair of shoes. And your honor will do just fine, Mr. Filch. You're trying to bribe the judge right now. Ah, it's those shoes again. That's, that's Fulbright's suit, shoes. Um, don't they belong to Detective Fulbright? Don't tell me Filch stole them again. They're all yours, your, your honorship. What? But they seem awfully expensive. Yeah, too expensive for me. But, but I reckon they'd be perfect for someone like your honorship. Trying to bribe the judge. Hmm, it's a kind gesture, but le legal ethics dictate I can't accept such gifts. Aw, ethics some, uh, some ethics. Just take them if you want them. Polished up real nice for you, too. 
I'm sorry about the shoes, Mr. Filch, but I will accept your testimony. The court would like to hear whether you saw Ten Matero in the foyer after the murder. Guarding the foyer. At the time of the murder, I was on guard duty in the foyer, just like Mr. Kiyubi asked. I was making sure no one, fair, foul, fishy, or otherwise could get to our guest. I was still in my office keeping a good watch when the murder happened after 3 p.m. But I didn't see nothing out of the ordinary, no sorry. That yokai you keep jabbering on about was but a phantom of a little girl's dreams. So, you're telling this court you never saw anyone dressed up like Tenmatero. Yep, I was guarding the whole time. That's the truth, the holy truth, and nut nut butter the truth. Look at how he's not keeping eye contact, he's clearly lying. And, and Tenmatero, bah, you don't really believe in all that yokai mumbo jumbo, do you? I certainly don't. Oh. Hmm. My bracelet. It just... Something the matter, Apollo. My bracelet keeps squeezing my arm. Really? So you think Mr. Tanuki, or... I mean, uh, Filch has been lying to us? I wouldn't rule it out. Now, if I could just zero in on the tell. Some sort of nervous uh, habit. Whoa, what the hell? What in the... What's the hawk doing in here? Allow me to introduce my trusty cohort, Taka. He seems to have taken quite a liking to the courthouse. Made it his new home, in fact. He doesn't live with you. You know, in jail? Who's ever heard of a courthouse bird? Taka simply loathes trickery and fraud. And that, uh, power of, of yours seems to have offended my dear bosom buzzard. This isn't some sort of trick or... Ah! Won't be able to uh, spot squat like this. What, what, what the heck's going on around here? Run for the hills! No, no pets or other animals allowed in the courtroom. Screech. Okay. Ah, somebody help! Oh, he's merely having a—he's uh, merely having a bit of sport. He won't harm you, uh, save when truly famished. In that case, Prosecutor Blackwell, you will ensure your feathered friend is properly fed. Looks like we have to do this the old-fashioned way. We'll be fine. I think. There was someone dressed as Ten Matero. There, Phil should have seen him. We'll just have to put our faith in Jinxie's statement for now. Mr. Justice, please proceed with your cross-examination. This is so ridiculous right now. Guarding the foyer. At the time of the murder, I was on guard duty in the foyer, just like Mr. QB asked. Hold it! Mr. Filch, why did the Alderman QB have, have you handle guard duty? Because <laughs> he trusts me. I am the manor's caretaker, after all. So you took said guard duty seriously. <laughs> Let me tell you something about me. I'm... Yipes! Listen here, you little tanuki. Get straight to the point and be quick about it. The court wishes to hear what you did or didn't see in the foyer and not else. <laughs> yes, of course, sir. Right away, sir. Blackwell has gone completely under his thumb. Like I said, I was guarding the foyer entrance that day. I was making sure no one fair, foul, fishy, or otherwise could get to our guest. Hold it. So no one could get to him. Sounds like security was pretty tight. That's because there's always lots of sneaks and thieves around festival time. Yeah, and you're one of them. And the solution was to entrust a mayor of security to a thief? That's not even funny. Maybe it's a matter of stopping thieves by hiring one. After all, it takes one to know one. I don't know. It seems more like letting the fox guard the henhouse to me. Hmm. So, so the witness testifies that he took his guard duty seriously. Yes, sir. Your honorship, sir. I was still in my office keeping a good watch when the murder happened after 3 p.m. Hold it! Did you really keep an eye on the foyer the entire time? <sighs> Poor old Filchy. Been working hard my whole life. Only to be smeared by some greenhorn in his fancy smudgy suit and silly haircut! 
Ah, sorry, Mr. Blackwell, sir. Didn't mean to get off subject there. Jeez, Blackwell didn't even say anything. To answer your question, yes, I kept an eye. No, both of them, in fact. On the foyer. But I didn't see nothing out of the ordinary. No, sirree. Hold it! Could you describe to the court who you would consider fishy-looking? Someone all fidgety and shifty-like, like, like you, you know, like they're about to steal something. He just described himself. I wonder why Mr. Filch didn't see Tenmatero. He did. Maybe Jinx the only thing she, she saw Tenmatero, or maybe Mr. Filch is lying. And if he's lying, we might be able to spot a contradiction in his testimony. Okay, there's, there's a contradiction here somewhere. At the time of the murder, I was on guard duty in the foyer, just like Mr. QB asked. Nothing suspicious here. I was making sure no one fair, foul, fishy, or otherwise could get to our guest. I was still in my office keeping a good watch when the murder happened after 3 p.m. But well, I didn't see nothing out of the ordinary, no siree. Murder happened after 3 p.m. No, it's this! He was watching TV! It's three! Objection! Don't lie to the court like that, Mr. Filch. Hey, it ain't right, uh, to bushwhack a fella like that. Unfortunately for you, I have evidence that proves you're lying. If you look at this TV listing here, you'll see at the time of the crime. There is a pro wrestling match scheduled. Something you'd never miss. Ah! I didn't watch that one, no siree. I was doing my job, like, just like I was supposed to. This guy doesn't know when to give up. Mr. Filch, someone even circled the match. It was you, right? Yipes! Not only that, you even told me you watched it. You said, and I quote, It was a complete disaster. So, do you admit to slacking off? You, you can't trick me with your Rudy Poo, uh, Poo lawyer talk. I'm one of the professional types too. No, I'm the professional here, and you're about to get old. I can do doobie, uh, double duty, watching TV and the foyer at the same time. The only thing Filch can claim to be a, a, of a professional of is professional thief. No, I'm the professional here. Mr. Justice. You would have this court believe the witness was slacking off? That's correct. He claims to have been watching TV and the foyer at the same time. There's nothing but a bald-faced lie. Bald, you say? But I'm not the one who's lying. Perhaps you mean the witness, Mr. Justice. And in that case, let's see what evidence you can offer. You claim Mr. Filch is lying about watching TV and the foyer simultaneously. Now prove it. The TV, yeah, look. Look, I'll move my camera so you guys can see it. Um, see that? That's where the TV is, look. And the chair is. He would not have been watching down the staircase. So yeah, he, he's lying. He's done here. It's this. Take that! Please take a look at the direction the TV is facing in this diagram. Now, unless Mr. Filch's eyes where his right ear should be. I'd think it would be impossible to watch the foyer entrance and TV at the same time. Why, yes, someone watching TV there couldn't possibly see the entrance. Exactly, and that means Mr. Filch. You are slacking off and not watching the foyer as you claim. Yipes! The bag's out of the cat. Er, I mean, the other way around. Order, order, order! But Mr. Justice, is Mr. Filch's less than stellar work ethic relevant to this case? It's very relevant, because while he was slacking off watching TV, there really could have been a Ted Matero impersonator in the foyer. Objection. What now? Granted, this Tanuki was lax in his duties, but he still had the foyer entrance covered. What are you talking about? This. Um, I'm not a mind reader. <sighs> All 
auditory sense. His eyes may have been slacking off, but his ears were still hard at work, right, Tanuki? They, they, they were? Er, I mean, yes. Yes, they were. But you already admitted to slacking off. Now you say you weren't? My eyes might be lazy, but my ears ain't. I would've hurt anyone in the foyer. <laughs> you see, the foyer f uh, floor and stairway get creaky, uh, squeaky when someone walks on them. Creak! 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 Loud enough to wake up the dead, I reckon. So you're saying you didn't hear anybody walk by? <laughs> yep, my ears were working full time. So, who's the liar now? You know, uh, good sh shyster? A lying thief calling me a shyster. This has to be the low point of my fledgling career. Gotta hand it to you, Mr. Blackwell, sir. You really are something else. <laughs> I mean, you don't miss a thing. And them bags under your eyes, they're darker than mine. Fair warning, Mr. Fields. Taka is particularly fond of Tanuki. Shouldn't you, uh, you lie to the court again, you may suddenly find yourself on the menu. Yipes! Please don't eat me, Mr. Taka, sir. The witness will henceforth testify truthfully under penalty of painful burn attacks. Well, it's supposed to be penalty of perjury, but... And with that in mind, the court requests that the witness revise his testimony accordingly. Here's working overtime. It's true, I, I was watching a pro wrestling match on the office TV. My eyes might have been slacking off, my ears, they were working overtime. The floor there's all creaky squeaky, um, uh, like, no way I would have missed someone walking by. So yeah, there wasn't no Tenma Taro in, in the foyer. Superstition is the religion of feeble minds. Understand? A simple rational explanation is best. Forget yokai demons and such. We must use common sense for lacking that our entire world would be but upside down. Says the convict prosecutor is totally a sign of the end times for the legal world. And besides, if there wasn't a yokai roaming around, I'd nab him and sell him to the zoo. I wonder whether Jinxie was just seeing things. That seems to be the general consensus, but I'm sticking to my guns. But if we can't prove she saw Tanma Taro, the mayor is sure to be convicted. Then we better hope my guns fire bullets, not BBs. The defense may cross-examine the witness. It's true, I, I was watching a pro wrestling match on the, the office TV. Hold it. You are paid for your work, aren't you? So how do you justify watching TV on the job? Uh, uh, alright. But, but, but... It ain't easy being me. I mean, I can't watch TV when we have visitors and there's no way to record stuff. Sorry, am I, am I supposed to be, uh, be counseling you over your first world problems? If those are his only problems, he should consider himself lucky. Wait a second, he said record. There's a security camera in the, uh, in the building. That should have captured anything. I guess pro wrestling's serious business to Mr. Filch. My eyes might have been slacking off, but my ears, they were working overtime. Hold it! You lied earlier about taking your guard duty seriously, didn't you? Oh, uh, that? Ain't no harm in bending the truth a little, right? Listen to me, you little tanuki. Lie again, and Taka shall feast upon that forked tongue of yours. Yipes! Sorry, uh, just let me keep my tongue. At least leave it until we get the truth out of him in any case. You were negle negligent in your duties, were you not? Yes. Yes, sir. I was, sir. But it ain't like that. The floor there is all creaky squeaky like. No way I could have would have missed something walking by. Hold it. So you have pretty good ears, Mr. Filch. As good as they come, I'd say. Ain't nothing to hear a creaky floor. Plus, that Ted Matero makes a sound when he goes by. It's like a jingle jangle. Jingle jangle. How does he do that? Wait a second. That's what Jinxie said. Jinxie said she heard the same sound. It was a jingle jangle, but he doesn't carry anything with him. It's that staff of his. That's what jingle jangles. What's he talking about, Apollo? 
beats me, but I guess Tematero has a staff that makes noise. Come to think of it, didn't Jing Jinxie mention something like that too? She did. She said she saw Tenmatero holding a staff-like object that made a jingly sound. I guess it's the source of the noise then. Well, Mr. Justice. Mr. Filch says Tenmatero jingle jangles. Would you consider that vital information? Very important. Extremely vital. I request that it be added to his testimony. If, te if Tenmatero is... Passed by, his staff would have gone jingle jangle. Hold it! So Ted Matero's staff makes a distinctive sound. Yep, uh, like a jingle and jangle. Wait, Jinxie said something like that. Something about the Ted Matero making a jangly sound. Hmm. I think we're missing something here, but I can't uh, quite put a finger on it. I know what it is. Perhaps I should take a look at the court record again. I know what it is. The last statement is irrelevant. Um... It's this one. Tenma Taro doesn't carry a staff. He doesn't have anything. He attacks with his hands and, and, and legs. Objection! Got it. Tenma Taro's staff would make a jangly sound, you say. Well, I'm going to say that your story doesn't add up. Is there something the defense would like to share with the court? Mr. Filch, you say that you didn't see Tenma Taro on the day of the incident. Why then did you assume just now that Tenma Taro would be holding a staff? You see, the Tenmatero Jinxie uh, saw held a staff in her in, in his hands. And she described its sound just like you did, uh, as a kind of jangly sound. Yeah, so he was holding a staff, what's your Objection. point? The point is that Tenmatero doesn't use a staff, not normally. What are you talking about? You see, this is the only known document depicting Tenmatero. Is there a staff in that picture, Mr. Filch? You're right! There's no staff! Not even a cane or a walking stick! Fuck! So the question is, why does the witness think Tenmatero uses a staff? I believe the answer will overturn the prosecution's case in the most basic level. Well now, this is getting interesting. Alright, Mr. Justice, it's time to show the court where you're going with this. Please tell the court why Mr. Phil's believes Tenmatero carries a staff. He actually saw Tenmatero. Mr. Filch actually saw Tenmatero right after the crime occurred. That's the only way you could possibly know about the staff. Yep. The busted, busted again. Bloody hell, you duplicious little. Yes, how'd that feel, Blackwell? So now, so that's the first time that we see Blackwell panic. Not so fun when you're on the receiving end of a blade, is it? Admit it, Mr. Filch. You did see Tenmatero that day, didn't you? Um... Uh-huh. Well? I'm begging you! Please don't make me say it! But clearly you did see Tenmatero. Stop stalling and testify to the fact. No, he can do... No, wait, no, no how. You ain't got no idea how terrifying he can be. He? Mr. Field still won't admit to seeing Tenmatero. Even though everyone knows he did. The question now is why? Mr. Filch is scared that he's scared of LaBelle. Is that why he can't admit the truth? Hmm. Come to think of it. They say you must not gaze upon Tenmatero, but in the event that you do, look, and then tell anyone what you saw, Tenmatero will claim your soul. I think he's, I think he's talking about LaBelle. Not about Tenmatero. Jinxie wouldn't admit to seeing Tenmatero after hearing about the village superstitions. She said that if she told anyone that she had seen Tenmatero, he'd claim her soul. Wait, you think Fit Filch believes that too? Ah, so Mr. Big Time City uh, Slicker Lawyer has heard about him. Them old village superstitions. Will the defense please explain what the witness is talking about? The people of Nine Tails Vale believe some pretty strange things. And their superstitions may be the reason our witness here can't admit the truth. The truth that he really did see Tenmatero. They're darn straight, that's why. It's all right here. Village superstitions. Do not gaze upon Tenmatero. Do not tell others if you see him. Ignoring superstitions will cost you your soul. There is, however, one way to save it. Your immediate uh, departure from the village. Freeing him will bring ruin upon the village. Ignoring superstitions will cost you your soul. See, that's why us folks in Ninetales Vale can't talk about seeing Tenmatero. Village superstitions that have been handed down generations generations in Ninetales Vale. That clears up one mystery. 
The killer took advantage of the superstitions by wearing a Tenma Tarot costume. They knew that that way no one could talk about him, so it was as if he never existed. The defense holds that this Tenma Tarot impersonator is a true killer. What? Now we're going somewhere. Objection! I love this music. Hmm. Superstitions, you say? What kind of fool would actually believe such rubbish? And would that using some silly fairy tale could so easily expose the culprit? You'll need to come up with a more rational, common sense explanation Objection. than that. Your common sense seems awfully narrow minded to me, Prosecutor Blackwell. Objection. Try living in my world of narrow cells, mortal danger, and dark, sleepless nights. There is uh, no lack of superstitions in the clink, but few are those who truly believe Objection. in them. Well, the village superstitions are real enough to the people of Nine Tails Vale. A life or death superstition might even make you a believer. Arr. Arr. Order! Order, I say! You fool of a tanuki! Two times now, your lies have cost me! So, so, sorry, sorry, I promise not to do it again! Taka, my fine feather friend, have at him! Ah! Nanji's gonna eat me alive! Head for the hills! Ah, he took off. Bailiff! What are you waiting for? After him! And watch your f fastest men! That's certainly not something you see every day. Well, it would seem a new and important fact has come to light. A third party disguised as Yokai Tenma Taro is at the scene. And now we have two witnesses who can attest to the fact. Any objections, Prosecutor Blackwood? Uh, uh oh. What? Huh? Ah! His shackles. Ah! Ah! I'm too young to die. Justice Dono, long has it been since I've been forced to draw my blade. You had best say your prayers. Eek! The judge ran away too? You gotta be kidding me. Where is the court? No. Where is the bailiff right now? We need some police in here now. Detective, do something! Ha 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 ha. Have no fear, Fulbright is here. When the going gets tough, the champion of justice gets going. Objection. Then get going already before he kills us. Oh, but I stand in awe of Simon Blackwell for it. It is his sense of justice that set him free. Objection, objection. I object to Detective Fulbright's definition of justice. Silence. <clears throat> I'm not in the habit of cutting down unarmed cowards. Oh, well, well, in that case, Prosecutor Blackwell, can I ask you to, uh, uh, you know... I think the judge forgot he's in charge here. So, Justice Dono's assertion is this, Tenma Taro is the real killer, not Mayor Tenma. According to him, there was a yokai at the scene of the crime. Right, and that yokai, or rather, whoever was impersonating him, killed all the refugees. Ah! Care to explain why Jinxie, being the first to discover the murder, did not see your alleged killer yokai there in the fox chamber? What? He's right, she said nothing about Tenma Taro being in the fox chamber. Hmm. Let me enlighten you. That little scamp heard a dying scream right before she opened the chamber door. And your point is? Upon opening the door, she found a, a freshly uh, skew skewed murder victim, the Alderman. And the homicidal maniac who had killed him, the mayor. No, there must have been someone dressed up like Tenma. Ah. 
then, why does that little scamp claim to not have seen the yokai in the box chamber? Hmm. Considering her father is accused of murder, surely she would have mentioned any third party that might have been in the room. I don't understand. Why didn't she see Tenmatero inside the fox chamber? Hmm. There is but one, one way to find out. Ask Jinxi Tenma whether she saw your killer yokai at the scene of the crime. Uh-oh. The final battle draws nigh. Only one of us will leave here alive. Hehehe. <laughs> Long has my blade thirsted for blood. At long last it shall be sated. Wait, this is still a trial, right? Show me what you're truly capable of. Justice, Dono. Very well then. Both parties no doubt need some time to regroup. So the court will take a ten minute recess in order to... Three minutes. I I'm sorry, but... A three-minute recess? Just so plenty of time when your destination of intent is the loo. The loo? You, you mean the bathroom? Sheesh. At least, at least include enough time to wash your hands. See that you take no more than three minutes. All latecomers will be punished. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. I hereby declare a three-minute recess before the battle begins. I declare Prosecutor Blackwell the winner of this round of Simon Says. Doesn't bode well for us if the prosecutor is running uh, the show, does it? April 18, 10.40 a.m. Uh, District Court. Defendant Lobby. Number three. He busted out of his shackles. Yeah, what was that all about? Guess they don't make shackles like they used to. Better be careful, Apollo. You've really brought out the samurai in him. Especially after you proved there was Ten Matero impersonator at the manor. What's with that guy and the whole samurai act anyway? Such fine swordsmanship. That is no, no mere act. Mr. Justice, it's high time I challenge this jailhouse prosecutor to a duel. No, wait. Uh, let's save the dueling until after we prove your innocence. Hmm. I suppose it could wait till later. Does anybody remember we're conducting a trial here? Athena, I'm gonna go wash up. Remember what Blackwell said, Apollo. Don't be late. April 18, uh, 10.43 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number four. Now then, I believe our next witness is Miss Jingxi Atenma, a maid at Kyuubi Manor. I believe we can pr proceed now. If the witness is ready, that is. Oh, whoa. N n n n Nar Nario Ihan, leader of the 100 demons. He really does exist. Wow, that is one well polished tray. The witness will, will show her face while in court, or her testimony will be inadm inadmissible. Eek! What, what is it, my child? Be gone, Nario Ihan, leader of the one, leader of the 100 demons. Ho ho ho! You think I'm a yokai? Well, I was once known as a judicial monster of sorts. The beast of the bar, the demon of due process, if you will. Eek! My charm is no eff my charm is no effect. Demon of due process, not sure I can see that one. Now you little scamp. Yes? I trust you know why you're here. B b bags Bags. Oh, that's uh, Trixie Tanuki. Try the noodle stand, and go enjoy a big bowl of Tanuki tail noodles while you're at it. Everyone's a comedian. No, I mean, your bags. The ones under your eyes. You must have trouble sleeping. Here, this charm will keep a a a a Azuki Kiarai away. Azuki Kiarai? The yokai that, that washes Azuki beans? The only thing needing washing will be your father's neck before I take his head clean off. Azuki Kiara uh, often keeps people up at night with the noise uh, he makes, washing beans. But if you stick this charm on your forehead, you won't hear him anymore. Is that so? Well, thank you. Looks like Prosecutor Blackwell got more than he bargained for. They're bad enough alone, but together, those two are just plain creepy. Your testimony, your testimony if you please, Miss Tanma. 
specifically whether or not you saw Tenma Taro when you discovered the crime scene. What Jinxie saw. Did I see Tenma Taro in the Fox Chamber? Well, when I opened the door, I saw... I saw... Yes, now I remember. <laughs> yokai, yokai right there in that room. So there was a yokai at the scene of the crime. Uh huh? Lots, uh, uh, lots of them. Wait, more than one yokai? Had Matero happen to be among them? I don't know. I just don't know. All I know is the room was swimming in yokai. Kasha, Nuriaki, uh, said, said to Tashio, Eek, they were all there. Well, this is an unexpected turn of events. We've gone from no yokai to a flood of them. This is ludicrous. You would have this court listen to this? Delusional little scam's testimony. Hold it! Your Honor, I believe her memory is simply clouded by fear. But a quick therapy session should ease her mind. With the court's permission, of course. What a fabulous idea. Please proceed, Miss Sykes. You sure you know what you're doing, Athena? She's obviously not herself. The trauma of discovering that crime scene. And fear of testifying have her dazed and confused. A regular ball of confusion. Well, my analytical psychology-based approach should be able to help. Any any objections, Prosecutor Lackwell? Shall we let Miss Sykes proceed? Hmm. It makes no difference to me. Do as you will, but I doubt we shall get any viable testimony. Do you better uh, serve by bearing witness to the sword skills I forged in a distant land? Hmm. I'll show you. Did I see Ted Matero in the fox chamber? But when I opened the door, I saw, I saw... Yes, now I remember. The y yokai right there in that room. Found something. Hmm. Looks like an out of control emotion. Um, Athena, what exactly were you looking at here? Oh, this. It's one of the witch's functions. Right here you can see images and emotions extracted from the witness's voice. Whoa, you mean that little thing you can do all this? Pretty cool, huh? And here, I thought it was just some uh, kid's toy. Unfortunately, all I'm getting is an overflow um, error right now. See how sad is writing um, lit there at the bottom left? She's under an un uncontrollable amount of distress, which is masking her other emotions. It seems the sheer terror she experienced has made her a confused mess. So... All those yokai she thinks she saw are a product of rampant emotions. Yes, that's right. Her fear has instilled in her hallucinations and false memories. She's seeing normal, everyday objects as monsters in her minds. It's a form of schizophrenic hallucination brought on by emotional trauma. And the trauma in Jinxie's case is fear. Though she was and still is seeing ordinary objects as yokai. We'll have to find the root cause for extreme fear before I can treat it. Now let's see. Yo yokai, yokai, right there in that room. Paolo, can you point out the yokai on the uh, wheel of fire? She seems particularly terrified of that one. Start refreshing probe, L1. Next point to what's causing Jinxie's out of control emotion. Finally hit probe again to try and get to the heart of the matter. Okay, let's give this a try. That monster on Jinxie, what's the name for the yokai in the Wheel of Fire? Yeah, th that's Akasha, a yokai that steals the bodies of the recently deceased. I bet it came to steal the aldermans. It's almost creepy how well that fits the, the actual situation. Exactly. It's a form of hallucination where the patient can't see uh, things for what they are. There must be something at the scene of the crime that she's mistaking for Akasha. 
Apollo, you need to point out what he thought was a yokai in the Wheel of Fire. Hmm. I think I know the answer now. Dingsy, that wasn't Akasha you saw. Uh, could you have possibly mistaken this for Akasha? Yeah, I think it's the chandelier of flames. Take that! The light fixture. This one right here, it has a flame design, and it's up there on the ceiling. There was never a yokai in a wheel of fire. That Akasha you saw was just a light fixture. Okay, that's fixed now. That's one memory back to normal. Nice job. Now that you got the hang of it, it should be a cinch to point out the rest. Jinxie, what about this uh, white wall-like monster? Th that's Nurukabi. It's a wall monster that blocks your way or leads you astray. That's no yokai, Jinxie. It's a folding screen. Eek. And this raccoon dog is a Tanuki monster. It's just a statue of one. And look, those are just coffee cups. And this right here is nothing more than a fox statue. Eek, I don't know what I was thinking. You did it, Apollo. Our extreme fear is under control now. It was all just my eyes playing tricks on me. They weren't any yokai after all. See, a clear stick-cut statement. That's the power of my psychology and your intuition, Apollo. And just like we thought, there never were any yokai in the fox chamber. Right, there were never really any yokai there. So the defense is asserting the exact opposite of the original assertion. Wait, um, Jinxie? What about Tenma Taro? <coughs> there wasn't anyone dressed up as Tenma Taro or any other yokai either. I remember it clearly now. You gotta be joking. Tenma Taro probably went through the vent. That's probably what happened. Order in the court. So look, this is my theory. This is what I think happened. I think the reason she didn't see Tenma Taro is I think at the time when she was opening the door, he went through the vent, the air duct here. That's probably what, but how he got up there is unknown to me. That's I, th I think that air duct is very relevant here. Order! Order in the court! I think we just dug out our, our own grave. Allow me to push you on in. It's the least I could do. No! Apollo, can I interrupt your freakouts just for a minute? I'm still picking up some noise. It's an unexpected emotion. Does that mean Jinxie hasn't remembered everything yet? Exactly. We should be able to get something else out of her. I'll enter the new information we have and run an update. Did I see Ten Matero in the fox chamber? I was so scared when I entered the room. Move this over here. My legs gave out and I fell to the floor. Three in the fox chamber. I saw Shiver. Three in the fox chamber. The alderman dead in the tail, and Papa collapsed in the chair. Nobody else was there, and that includes Ten Matero. Wait, what am I supposed to do? Try to find the emotion that contradicts her statements. If I find a contradictory emotion, I should point it out. That's right. But it's not just contradictory emotions you should look out for. You should also keep an eye out for sudden changes in emotions intensity. Our emotions might get stronger or weaker as you move from statement to statement. It's important to compare how the same emotion changes throughout the testimony. Contradictory emotions and changing in intensity. Okay, I'll give it a shot. 
Let's move this here. This is probably the best place for the camera. I see Tenma Tara in the fox chamber. I was so scared when I entered that room. My legs gave out and I fell to the floor. There in the fox chamber I saw a shiver. Elmer dead on the floor. Table and Papa collapsed in a chair. Nobody else was there, and that includes Ted Matero. I think I know what the answer here is. Hold on, let me let me take a look again. emotion is this. It's the scared emotion, I think that's what it is. The upset emotion. Got it. Mm. This seems like an unnatural reaction. Really? Because I don't see it that way. Yeah, so notice how the, the intensity of the shocking one fell down. I think that's it. I think she's lying about seeing Tenma Taro because remember, again, the the legend in the village. Um, do not gaze upon Tenma Taro. Do not tell others if you see him. Ignoring your superstitions will cost you your soul. That's what it is. Is there? She's scared. She's not going to say anything. The killer's taking advantage of that. The killer dressed up as Tenma Taro and is taking advantage of that because the people in the village are scared that if they say that they saw him, they're, he's going to take their soul. Wait, I go back here. Got it! The amount of fear you felt is rather low, despite your legs having given out from fright. Could something have lessened your fear? Actually, I did experience sudden bursts of courage at that moment. You did? Where did it come from? Um, uh, let me think. Oh, it was Mama. I suddenly felt that she was there with me. Okay, I'll enter sudden burst of courage. Now let's see. Ah, look. Hollow, the noise is all gone. Jinxie seems to have remembered everything now. 
A sudden burst of courage. Now, where could that have come from? Jinxie, was there something that gave you a sudden burst of courage? Um, yes, there was, but... Um, I, uh... I realized I had done something naughty when I thought about it later. Any idea what could have given Jinxie that courage? Well, there is one piece of evidence that comes to mind. I wonder if you saw something like, like it at the scene of the crime. Jinxie, did your sudden burst of courage have anything to do with this? Warding charm. Oh, the the flower. Take that! Jinxie, you didn't happen to see a nine tails flower there at the scene, did you? Ah, the demon lawyer strikes again. I can't hide anything from you. I found a small case with a picture of a nine tails flower on it. I liked it so much I kept it. You what? You can't remove evidence from a crime scene. That's right, young lady. Remember, moving evidence is a big no-no. Now, the witness will produce said evidence this instant. Sorry, sorry. Hmm. It does seem to be some sort of case. Oh, look, something slid out. It appears to be a key. Might I have a look your ball this? Hmm. Ah. This is none other than the master key to Kyuubi Manor. Are you certain of this, Prosecutor Blackwell? It matches the serial number of the key that went missing after the murder. A master key? That went missing? Why don't I like the sound of that? Our little, our little scamp here stumbled upon an article of unimaginable consequence. That's a little melodramatic, don't you think? Hmm. Heed these words, for I shall say them but once. The sole key to the fox chamber has his little scamp's constant... In this little scamp's constant possession. Ergo, she was the sole person who could use it before, during, and after the murder. Which leaves the master key as the only other key that could have opened the chamber. But this master key... Was found in a room that had been locked by this girl. And your point is... Until Jinxie Tenma opened the fox chamber of her key. The room had been locked tight from the outside world. And there was no one else in there save the victim and his killer. I trust you have figured it out for yourself by now. Oh, uh, great. I know what he's saying. That the killer couldn't have gotten out. A killer other than Mayor Tenma himself would be utterly inconceivable. No! How could this happen? Er, it's not an objection. The defense assistant will refrain from growing her frustrations. Athena, are you alright? Uh, I know Mayor Ten was innocent, but there's nothing we can do. This sucks. Sykes, I don't know. Allow me to put you out of your misery. Can I decline your offer? Abandon your client and your misplaced faith in him. Let the relief of a clear head and a clear conscience come rushing in. That will make the inevitable guilty verdict far easier to accept. Great. Now he's playing Simon Says of us. Well, he's not going to fool us with stupid mind games. Athena, don't fall for his tricks. Uh, now I'm the one who's da dazed and confused. I can't even think straight. How are you all right? She fell into his trap. Now I suggest you make a mad dash for the courtroom and, and into the wild blue yonder. Only by running shall your mind be cleared and your conscience cleansed. Alright, I'll be back in ten. No, Athena, don't. No. Stay with me, Athena. Don't let yourself be twisted by that samurai. Apollo? Mr. Justice, I heard the word objection, but what is your, your object to? Huh? Alright. That objection was more of a reflex than anything else. Though I was hoping something would come to me while I was trying to stop Athena. The court is waiting, Mr. Justice, though it stands as it stands now. I'll be forced to declare your client guilty, and your legal skills suspect if this is it. Now, do you have anything that could overturn the prosecution's case? Um, well, actually, I do. I'm Apollo Justice, and I'm fine. Apollo, you do have something more than your cords of steel, don't you? Not really, but we'll be fine. 
What about that? I've got absolutely nothing, but that's never stopped me before. I have to explain how the real killer could have escaped that locked room. Because it's all over if I don't. Apollo, this calls for a new approach. Try to think outside the box. Or in this case, inside the box. And what a doozy that locked room is too. Well, Mr. Justice, do you have anything that can counter the prosecution's argument? You, you bet I do. The real killer must have escaped from the locked room one way or another. Fake conjecture shall only earn you a taste of my blades, Justice Dono. Uh, time to do or die, literally. The defense will now explain how it would be possible to escape the locked room. You, you sure about this, Apollo? Can you really explain what happened? Yeah, I'm fine. We just need to think this whole escaping a locked room thing over from the beginning. So, let's see. If the killer had escaped, how could they have done so? The choices are pretty limited. The room has a window, but... It doesn't open wide enough for anyone to get through, and there's a sheer cliff outside. The vent. It's the vent. As for the air vent... It's up too high, and... There's nothing you could stand on to reach it. And needless to say... Forbidden Chamber wouldn't open no matter what we did. So that's out. Yeah, that's why we gotta keep the solution simple, like they say simple is best. We need to rule out all the absolutely impossible escape routes. Then whatever's left just might lead us to how the Fox Chamber was compromised. Your Honor, the defense proposes that the killer escape through here. Gotta be the air duct. I can't really think of anything else. Wait a second, hold on a second. Can I see a picture of the room? I think I know how he got up in the air vent. You remember that big vase that was near the door? Look at where the, the fox chamber is. The fox chamber is right near the door. There was a big vase that was right near the door. And when the door slammed open, the vase cracked. And so you don't know the, the, the exact position of it. You just know it was near the door. It got blown back by the door. That's probably what happened is he probably stood on the vase and used that to climb the vent. That's at least my theory. I remember there's a cracked vase near the door and Apollo said, why would that be there? Hmm. And just how did the killer escape through there, Mr. Justice? <clears throat> ah, I wish I could escape right now. chance left. No, it's not that. No. 
Okay, gotta figure this out here now. How did the killer escape? The door, the front door maybe, but... Take that! The, the hallway door? Well, yes, I suppose that would be the, the only way out. Hmm. It would appear you've already forgotten. The only available key until Jinxie Tenma came on scene was written within that locked room. How would one exit the Fox Chamber and then lock it without a key, hmm? I should have seen... I should have seen this coming. Remember, Apollo, keep it simple. Simple, right. I could have... Uh, I could understand the killer had exited the room with the key, but... Well, Wild Mystery Justice? The prosecution has some fine Japanese, um, I steal, uh, waiting until you explain yourself quickly. I'm fine. I can explain myself. The reason the Fox Chamber's hallway door is locked was because... Tenma locked it from the inside. I have to think very carefully on this now. Wasn't the the key was like in a coin, right? In like kind of like a coin. Couldn't the killer have thrown it in the air duct and the air duct would have pushed the key back into the room? Couldn't he have done that? That's a possibility, isn't it? It could have rolled through the vent back in the room if he threw it in there. It locked on its own? No. I don't think so. The perp locked it from the outside. What the room was locked from the outside? In other words, the killer took the key through the hallway door then locked it. Consider this. The master key was found inside the tightly locked fox chamber. Any assertion that the key was removed from that room is blatant contradiction to fact. Exiting the room before locking the door would require taking the key outside. But the key was found inside the room. Does that seem like a contradiction? If only we could explain both. Like how the key would be inside the room and be used to lock the door from outside. Well, let's see if the defense can respond before Prosecutor Blackwell draws his sword. How could the master key be at the crime scene despite the room being locked? Threw it in through the outside. Slipped in when the door was open. Not change the lock. Slipped in when the door was open. Threw it from the outside. What someone threw it in the room from outside, you know, something like... Go out the hallway door, lock the room, and then toss the key back in through the window. That would explain how the master key could be inside the locked room. And where would you throw it from? There's a cliff outside the fox chamber window. Throwing the key in from there is impossibility. Oh, right. I wonder if the key could have been tossed in from somewhere other than the window. I'm on the right track, I got it. Somewhere other than the window. Hmm. Could the key have been tossed in from somewhere other than the window? Oh, let's see if I'm right on this. The air duct. Air vent? Yes. The window may be out, out of the question, but the air vent's not. I got it! I'm on the right track. I got it. I figured it out. Oh, that's right. The fox chamber's air duct leads out into the hallway. That's right. The real killer entered the air duct um, uh, from the vent outside the fox chamber. Then dropped the key into the room through the vent inside the chamber. Huh. That's preposterous. Oh, that explains how the key got in there after it was used to lock the door perfectly. Mr. Justice, I'm, I'm afraid I'm a bit confused. Don't worry. I'll explain it to you uh, so even your honor can understand while you're insulting the judge right now. First, the real killer disguised as Ten Matero murdered the alderman in the fox chamber. 
Then they fled the room through the hallway door and locked it. Next, they entered the air duct from the vent outside the hallway. So I didn't, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of him climbing in the vent. I thought he would just throw it through, and the air would just roll the coin. You know, the coin would just roll through the, the vent and just fall down. But it is possible he could have climbed in, too. Finally, the killer tossed a key into the room through the air vent in the ceiling there. All that was left to do after that was going go back through the duct and flee the Mont Manor. So yeah, this music means we're on the right track. I love this music. Well, Your Honor, could that be any clearer? Amazing. Even I could follow that. The judge seems really pleased. That explains everything. The real killer was someone dressed up like Ten Matero. And there was someone else other than the mayor and the alderman in that room. Hey, it looks like that lawyer has beaten the jailbird prosecutor. Whoa, that was a total turnabout. That massive forehead seems much more attractive now. Order, 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 I say! Now that I've proven a possibility third party, I don't see how our client could be guilty. Silence. A valiant effort, Justice Dono, but your final thrust missed its mark. Huh? Both that little scamp and that tricksy uh, Tanuki saw the yokai after it left the room. But then what? Did that irksome yokai simply go through the foyer and waltz right out the front door? That that's exactly what happened. The killer fled from the. But that is impossible. Without being spotted by the foyer security camera, that is. The electric eye here would have captured any pesky little yokai trying to escape. However, there is no sign of Ted Matero anywhere in the security footage. What? what Save for the foyer entrance, there is no other way to flee the manor, is there? I don't feel so good. Wait, I believe there is one other way to escape besides the foyer entrance. There's a large window in the foyer. It's possible to escape through there without being seen by the security camera. But there's a cliff there, isn't there? Hey, you're right. Silence. We have a picture of Ten Motero. Hmm. Must I point out every crucial detail to the defense? It seems he lacked not only brains, but investigative proudness to boot. That is the cliff side of the manor. The only killer escaping that way would be a dead one. No! Wait, so the killer didn't escape out the foyer window. What the heck, right? Ha! I suppose your next proposal is the killer sprouted wings and flew off into the sunset. Well, actually, that's what I was gonna say. That would mean the killer really was a yokai. If only we had some sort of evidence that could point to a flying killer. Who's saying we don't? As completely far-fetched as it might be. We do. We do have the picture. What? You're saying you can prove the killer could fly? Yeah, we have evidence. Well, I f thought I was the one with the cords of steel. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. Um, Your Honor? What evidence do you have that the killer flew away? This. A photo of Tenma Taro. The ten an airborne figure was captured on camera around 3.40 p.m. That's 20 minutes after the murder. Take that! Take a look at this special edition paper. Ten Matero, real or flight or fa a fancy? What does this article prove? M what does this article prove, Mr. Justice? The photo in that article was taken shortly after the murder. Maybe the yokai in that photo is the killer shortly after they fled out the window. M Mr. Justice, you're not seriously suggesting. Oh, I'm serious. I mean, it all adds up. The killer disguised Ten Matero flew away, you know, by some way or another. Silence. It is your brain that has flown the coop. That image is not, but trick photography or some other form of uh, artifice. Okay, then how about Tenma Tarot figure Mr. Filch saw? It just vanished into thin air? No, there is a rational common sense explanation for that. That in infernal yokai, our tricky Tanuki witness, never reached the entrance. He, or should I say, sh she, uh, turned back before the camera's electric eye. She? I don't like where this is going one bit. Now, the, the fact that we know that Yokai had come from the Fox Chamber, 
means that it was likely either Mayor Damien Tenma or his daughter Jinxie Tenma. However, we know that Mayor Tenma was already unconscious at the time. Oh no. Not good. He's gonna accuse Jinxie. Do you understand the gravity of the situation now, Justice Dono? The falsified yokai remnants. And the appearance of Tenma Taro were the work of one individual. And that individual is none other than Jinxie Tenma. No! Ah, no! Order, order! This, the defense will stop uh, competing for the greatest freakout ever. The little scamp was no doubt simply trying to protect her father. And it's no wonder that her superstitious mind conjured up this mad masquerade. Prosecutor, Prosecutor Blackwell's assertion makes perfect sense to me. It's far more convincing than saying the killer escaped by flying out the window. <clears throat> Did you truly believe this could end any other way? And we fall right into his trap. What do we do, Apollo? A case no longer stands about a real yokai. If only we had one. Bailiff, uh, uh, sees her. It is time I interrogated her at the samurai of your wo uh, wood. Oh, it's Jinxie's father. Uh, Mayor Tenma. Hmm. This farce is over. How does it feel seeing your, your own daughter accused of a cover-up most foul? Tenma, te Tenma, Taro's, uh, Tenma Taro's true identity is. Now, now, Mr. Mayor. It would be futile at this point to claim you were the yokai. After all, you had been knocked out cold by a blow to the skull. Slipping into a yokai costume and roaming about the manor will be all but impossible. Consider this well. As it stands, your daughter will be arrested for obstruction of justice. But if you confess, the prosecution will be willing to overlook her little yokai farce. Confess? The defendant intends to confess? Wait. He's trying to trick him, don't. Ap Apollo, prosecutor Blackwell's up to his mind games again. Mayor Tenma, no. Don't fall for his twisted words. If you're sent away for murder, Jinxie will be left all alone. The real killer is... Maritana is going to confess unless we do something. But... But I can't prove how the real killer could have flown away. Cow, 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 cow. Look upon me and... and look upon me in despair, for ripe is the time of, for my return. Hmm? Uh-oh. I should watch what I wish for. Kakakakakao, foolish mortals. I am Tenma Taro, the yokai you seek. Um, Mayor Tenma? Silence! I am Tenma Taro, free from the bonds b binding me to the Forbidden Chamber. Behold, the return of the Demon King. What? what the? Demon King? Is he trying to play insanity at this point? Well, then I think it's time to take a vacation. Witness will, um, he will explain himself. Are you saying you're Tenma Taro, the yokai we've been chasing this whole time? Indeed, it is I, Tenma Taro, the one whom you seek, come to reveal the truth. This child is Tenma Taro, you say. Ha! Huh, what nonsense. So Mayor Tenma is a yokai now? Kakakakakao, his body is now mine. So you're, you're saying that Mayor Tenma is being possessed by you? And that the yokai that Jinxie, Tenma, and Phineas Phil saw? And the one captured in the newspaper photo? Those were all you? The cursed power of these warding charms prevents me from revealing my true form. Your baldness! 
Can this not be interpreted as an admission of guilt? Well, a confession by a yokai would be quite unprecedented. Be that as it may, the defense's case has been overturned. Huh, what? You claim the yokai that little scam saw was some third party, the true killer. The one who escaped from the locked fox chamber, but it was the accused all along. Ah. Ironic, is it not? Your yokai turned out to be the real in a matter of speaking. For the alderman's killer is none other than Mayor Tenma. And the yokai at the scene? That too was Mayor Tenma, or should I say, our dear Tenma Taro. The pieces have all fallen into place. How so, Prosecutor Blackwell? Hmm? It seems I must spell it out all for you. Mayor Tenma uh, killed the alderman in the fox chamber, which was locked at the time. He then removed the warding charms from the Forbidden Chamber's door. But then fell unconscious from the blow the alderman had delivered to his head. That's when his daughter, Jingxi Tenma, stumbled onto the scene of the crime. The little scamp fled in terror, whereupon the spirit of Tenma Taro. Freed at last when the charm's warding effect took possession of the mare. The newly freed Tenma Taro then fled from the fox chamber. So you see, the yokai a Jinxi Tenma saw was her father possessed by Tenma Taro. But when we arrived at the scene, the mare was found unconscious. How is that possible if you're supposed to have flown out the foyer window? Then what, do you mean to say uh, the maid of Kiwi uh, Manor Jinxi Tenma was Tenma Taro? Oh. Ah. This is getting confusing now. Ka 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 ka. That too is easily explained. Flew about for a time, did, uh, did I, but presently tired, I made for the Forbidden Chamber. But alas, exhaustion took me unawares in the Fox Chamber, and I knew no more. Hmm. It would seem the pieces are still in place. Is Blackwell up to his tricks again? I, I don't know what to say. Is the defendant a real, live... That rumor about Mayor Tenma is true? I know knew Yokai were real. You mean he really did kill the Alderman just so he could release Tenma Taro? Order, order! Now he's got everyone in the courtroom believing in Yokai. It's Simon says on steroids. He wants to convict our client any way he can, even if it means blaming a Yokai. The uh, proverbial ducks are all in a row. You should now have no qualms about finding the accused guilty, your baldness. Hmm. This is, is one of the most bizarre cases in my entire career. Otherworldly, in fact. And you can't even be prosecuted under our legal system. Mayor Tenma is just pretending to be Tenma Taro to protect his daughter. Plus, I already proved how a third party could have escaped from the locker room. A verdict at this point would be premature. Hmm. Since both sides have raised valid points, I have no choice but to... Hmm. This is the dark age of law where defense attorneys are not to be trusted. This is but a ploy to gain time for them to fabricate evidence. How will I sleep tonight? Knowing you will not let the sun rise on the mayor's day of reckoning. Justice, don't know. I won't fabricate any evidence. Then prove it uh, by joining me. A night in the clink will ensure you will not succumb to temptation. How about I just promise not to succumb to anything? We have both evidence in the confession. The killer is this yokai before us. It is beyond dispute. A guilty verdict is all but... Uh, 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 what? What's wrong with him? Prosecutor Blackwell, you've had enough of your hijinks. The foundation of justice is fair play, and you are in serious violation of that. Uh, what? What in the devil was that? Fool Bright, have you tampered with my shackles in some manner? <laughs> it seems you found that quite shocking. It's my special jolt of justice advice. Each press is a shocking reminder to behave. You shall pay for this. I, Simon Black, will vouch you. <laughs> Your Honor! You need not fear now. I believe Prosecutor Black will remain on his best behavior. A bit la late with the reassurances, aren't we, Detective? Well, well in that case, uh huh. This concludes today's deliberations. The prosecution and defense will use this opportunity to further their investigations. This court is adjourned. Ooh, that was a messy trial. To be continued.
So I guess we'll leave it off here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoy this part. This case is getting crazy and out of control. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.